just a short video this week a little bit of food for thought many of you have already collected your new imprint hawks birds for this season many of you have collected your parent reared birds but there's still a lot of people that are almost there maybe a week or three off collecting their new 2024 bird so some food for thought when it comes to collecting that bird especially when it's your first bird now i've got to say that i'm actually out of the wind for change but i'm away that's why it's a short video i'm not around we're away with lily our granddaughter and i'm sitting in my van and you can still hear the horrendous wind noise from the east coast but i'll do my best bear with so things to think about number one is equipment for that bird have you spoke to the breeder is he fitting anklets and jesses and so on and so forth or is he expecting probably quite rightly so that you're going to come along with kit and if you are if you can don't just have one set of anklets or one hood and the reason being just because you've brought anklets for a female harris hawks they can really vary so i usually have a couple of sets and i usually have a couple of sets from different manufacturers actually just so i've got something very different and probably slightly different on sizing even though it's for the same bird species and the same sex so who's providing the kit you should really have i believe really good quality anklets jesses swivels leash everything in place it's not the breeder's job to furnish furniture your hawk it's your job but many breeders will put on anklets and they will put on jesses but discuss with your breeder what equipment your bird's going to have yours or his to be honest if you're his or hers if they're providing kit you want a set anyway you want a spare set of everything really are you expected to get the bird home and kit it up yourself with your kit or is the breeder agree that he's going to net up the bird for you and he's going to assist you fitting those anklets and other, other furniture so it's all there when you get home so really talk to your breeder as time gets towards collection time who's doing what who's providing what are you going to get any help or is he just expecting you to put that bird in a box and sort your life out when you get home most decent breeders especially for a first time buyer they will at least help you kit up the bird are you going to hood that bird on the way home so falcons pretty much across the board you're going to hood that bird hood it and travel it hooded I've picked up many falcons hooded on the fist and a friend of mine's driven home with a bird on the glove and a towel on my lap. Equally, I've collected goshawks, hooded them and they've travelled home in a standard hawk travel box and they've travelled home and they've sat on the perch hooded all the way back with no problem and you can get them out of the box without any fluster or flapping. Equally, some birds will go ballistic when they're hooded and you'll often be better off travelling those back in a darkened box just depends on the bird it depends on the species and it depends on the individual but are you going to hood that bird to make it easier to take it home or is that going to be a problem if you are going to hood it have at least two hoods slightly different sizes they're like well-fitted tailor-made shoes just because you've got the hood for the right species just like the anklets and the right size bird whatever it doesn't mean that hood will fit and if it's too tight you really can't travel it hooded and then it does come to the the travel boxes hopefully you brought yourself a nice new shiny travel box uh, ready to f travel your hawk in around the countryside or around the country or around your local area once you get out training and hunting are you traveling in that hard plastic box or wooden box or are you going to find another way so let me tell you that a lot of birds will not travel in a travel box when they're just being collected they won't sit on the perch they'll go ballistic they'll bang and jump around all the way home especially the ones that aren't hooded they're going to be hitting a very hard plastic surface to be quite honest it often works out best to simply have a good sized sturdy cardboard box holes low down right near the bottom around the bird's feet so it's not trying to jump up to a light source coming in and this is how to do it don't chuck a towel in the bottom of the box it's just going to get all bunched up as you travel around the bird's going to scrabble around it's going to bunch that towel up and you just have a pile of towel and feathers in one corner when you get home get some clean not dusty old moldy carpet which will give your bird various things like aspergillosis a clean bit of very short pile carpet just tape it down inside the box 
or just get some cheap AstroTurf, the really cheap stuff, no good for purchase, but brilliant for this job. And again, stick it down, not just chuck it in the bottom of the box. If it's stuck down, the bird's got something to grip its talons into, and it will travel just fine sitting in the box with no perch. In fact, that dark box with just air holes around the bottom gives it something that plastic boxes don't give them, and that's a padded cell, realistically. If they jump and bang around in a cardboard box, they're just going to bounce off the walls and the ceiling. It's a so much softer impact than a hard plastic durable uh, hawk box for sure. You've picked up the bird, especially if it's in the sun or you don't have air con. Even if arranged, don't go and get that bird when it's 30 degrees Celsius. The stress of capture and the heat in that travelling box on the way home can be enough to kill that bird. Don't do that. If it's a freak heat wave day in the UK, for goodness sakes, just look at the forecast. Maybe you're going to have to leave it a couple of days and go on a cooler day. Don't collect that bird on a baking hot day and travel it home in a baking hot vehicle. That's You are risking a big investment in a bird's life for sure. Really are. It's not worth the risk on these hot freak days we do get now in the UK. Don't collect your bird, even if it's far, far away. We often drive hundreds of miles to collect birds and animals and think you can have a bit of sightseeing on the way. By all means, stay overnight and do a bit of sightseeing or see other things when you're there. But once that bird's collected, just get it home. Get it home as quick as you can. Get the bird out of its box, even if you think it was hooded in the box, because it might not be now, you just don't know. Get it out of the box in a really confined space with curtains or blinds on the windows a bathroom can often work somewhere if the bird bolts out of the box and for some reason it slips through your grasp it's not going to need chasing around and bash itself into windows in your house or worse still escape into the garden for goodness sakes do not open that box outside whatever you do really really important so you've collected the bird you've got it home it's nice and cool maybe or maybe not it's hooded it's probably in a cardboard box for the, the bird's safety's sake you've unpacked the bird when you've got home in a really confined space in a darkened room as dark as better as long as you can see what you're doing if the bird went in the box with a leash on then run your hands at that leash and slide it straight up and get the bird up on the fist and pull it out and get into space get that bird tethered to the glove safety position you know all this because you've done all this research before you've even thought about getting a hawk and then decide what you're going to do from then on. This is only about collecting that bird. From then on, from then on, the one thing I would say is something that seems counterintuitive because you want to keep the bird cool. You're obviously never going to tether it in the hot sun to start with. You're going to keep it in a shady, quiet place. Do not put a bath down. That bird will never drink on its first day if it's parent reared or almost never. Birds have drowned by baiting suddenly away from you as you approach them on their new perch, a new bird, baited away violently, straight into its bath, took a lung full of water in, just like a person falling, and, go, <gasps> and they've drowned within a few minutes then of, of water on their lungs. Do not put a bath down, but what you really can do is have a plant spray bottle, soak those birds down. Not if it's cold, but in the summer, soak them down. It will keep them cooler. It'll actually stop them baiting because their wings are so wet they won't want to try and fly. And if they do, the wet feathers will be more supple than the dry feathers and they're more likely to take a bit of that abuse from that early stage baiting. So by all means, spray those primaries and those secondaries down. It'll keep the bird cool. It'll stop it baiting or prevent as much baiting and it'll make those feathers more supple. Especially important for things like goshawks and falcons and even red tails in their first year out. Quite stiff, brittle feathers for sure. And if you're collecting something like a goshawk, are you going to take a tail guard and fit the bird or the plectrum or the tail mount so the tail guard can be secured to that bird's tail when in transit? Are you going to go through the old fashioned way of a paper towel, a paper towel, um, paper tape that's got self adhesive tape, brown tape that protects the tail but then soaks off in water? Make sure you get the right stuff. Soaks off in water after the initial manning stage make sure you know what you're doing before you go to collect the bird okay so just to recap speed is of the essence of course getting that bird home keeping it cool not hot is really important 
Make sure you've discussed with the breeder, is he kitting the bird up with its furniture or are you? Make sure you've got adequate and correct and quality furniture for the hawk anyway. A spare set will not go amiss. Are you going to hood the hawk? What are you going to travel it home in? Make sure it's something soft it can't bash itself on. Make sure it can grip the surface, so a short pile astroturf or something like that stuck down in the box. Really important. Just get that bird home as quick as you can and then assess. And then comes along the nerve-wracking but exciting time of now manning and training your possibly first bird. It will be daunting. It will be much more worrying and exciting but sort of scary than you ever 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 thought of even if you've done a falconry course that first bird that frightened bird that's going to be frightened of you for the first few days before you transform it into something that's bonded with you and eventually will be flying free and hunting with you those first few days they're scary they're worrying be methodical be calm don't lose your rag in front of the bird of course and make sure you remember your training that safety position when you're tethering and untethering, tethering to the D-ring on your glove, how to pick up and put down the hawk, make your records from day one, and of course, hopefully you're going to hood that hawk. The hooding journey starts from the first moment you pick up that hawk onto the glove, not a few days later when you feel the bird's karma. That will not work. Enjoy your birds, guys, and I hope this has just given you a little bit of food for thought, but hopefully... A bit more confidence for that day when you are going to collect that new bird.